Hello, it's Duncan. Last week's refactoring to remove our I.O. contact receiver was relatively easy, because the receiver was never actually referenced. It was just a marker. Our transaction contact receiver may carry state, though. So to remove its use, we're going to have to convert from function context to function parameters. This is the widest ranging refactor we've yet covered, and is hampered by IntelliJ's tooling not properly supporting context receivers, but as you'll see, we still never had more than five minutes where the code didn't compile and pass all the tests. This is crucial as it means we can make changes like this on the main branch, integrating regularly so that we won't need a complex and risky merge when the whole task is complete. Oh, it builds. Does it pass? Yes, it does. Good. The other major place that we use context receivers is for transactions. So our items interface here which is implemented by DV items and dual items and our stock list items, oh, and in-memory items, has these save and load operations, and they require a transaction as a context to work. This is so you can't just talk to the database without having set up a transaction. Each implementation of items also has this function here that allows you to create a transaction and use it to run a block that does itself require that transaction. Now, this is used in places like our app class. And for operations like delete items IDs here, you can see we ask the items to start a transaction and then ask the stock to load and update a stock list, which requires a transaction. And then item save here also requires a transaction. And that means that this load and this save happen in the same transaction. The same thing happens down here with add item. We load and update the stock list, and then we add the item to it, and then we save it in the single transaction here. But the use of context parameters means that stock, load and update stock list here, can say that it needs this transaction context, which is automatically propagated to this items load and items save here. However, context receivers are no longer supported, and context parameters are not available. So if this code base is going to continue on the current version of Kotlin, given there'll be no overlap, we need to get rid of our context receivers. In principle, I think that should be reasonably easy because, for example, if we take this save, it is effectively a function with another parameter, which is this context. So we should be able to take this thing, duplicate it, and say that's kind of equivalent to another function that takes a stock list and has a transaction, which is of type TX. And in fact, we could even implement that in terms of the thing we have already, which would be with TX that sets up the context receiver called the other save of our stock list. So you see that compiles, there's just one problem and that's this type parameter TX is declared as out, but occurs in in position in here. Now, given this TX is in here, I think it should have been in here. I don't think that should have compiled at all. But no matter, we can just make it in here. But if we do, we find another error here, which is type parameter TX is declared as in, but occurs in an out position. It's odd as an out position, but what it's saying is that this block here receives this transaction as its input, as this context. And so that's effectively coming out, if you like, of the items. It's slightly odd that it can work that out for this block, but couldn't work it out for this function, but we are where we are. So I think we've established that this transaction type here can neither be in nor out, which is neither contravariant nor covariant. It just has to be invariant, and that allows our items to compile. So if we build that, we now have a problem. Now, what's our problem here? Well, it's difficult to tell from the error message but effectively, this items is an items that needs a database TX context. But because this is an invariant, items of a subtype, this one can't be substituted for items of a subtype, which is this one. Now we can finesse that a bit by saying we just don't care. We make that a star, and this will compile. But if we do, note that we have another issue down here that stock, stock takes an items of TX context. And we had the same problem there. Now we might try and finesse that by making that a star. But if we do, we're saying we really don't care. But we do care because this item's load needs the right type. And we've said we don't know what that type is. It's just any old context here. 
Does that make sense? I think it does to me. I think what we need to do is make stock care about the transaction context. So we're just going to say this is some transaction. And if that's true, then the item is going to be that same transaction. And if that's true, then the context we need is the same type. Now, at the moment, it says that a transaction must be TX context, which is this open class here, which we have subtypes of. But in fact, I don't think that's all that helpful to us. It doesn't make this class compile. It just makes everything a bit more complicated. So we're going to relax that and come back here and see that now stock compiles. So let's build. OK, now the price stock list loader, I think that's going to have the same problem because it has this TX context here and this TX context here, and they kind of need to match. So I think we're going to have to say this needs to know something about a context. This needs to know that context, and that needs to match that one. Oh, and by the way, that needs to be that specific type there as well. And let's try building everything. And now here it's saying, well, this price stock list loader, I don't know what the type is. Uh, but we do. Well, we don't really. But what we know is that this thing has been built on dual items. I think we can kind of get around this by saying that our entire app here also needs to be parameterized with the type of the transaction. If so, then this price loader will be a loader of TX, which is our transaction type. And we are very nearly building. Only one problem, and that's that this constructor now sort of can't fix that type. I don't know quite how to put that in words, but what we can do is we could have a function rather than constructor here. And the simplest way to do that and have everything sort of compile is to say we're going to create a companion object. Inside the companion object, we're going to have a fun invoke, which is going to take the same parameters as this. In fact, what we're going to do is we're just going to move this up into there. That, and instead of calling this like that, we're going to say this is equal to creating a new app. So where the code was previously calling constructor as app something, it's now going to call this invoke. How's that doing for building? OK, now, though, we've made our app depend on the type of the transaction. Again, I'm not sure there's any real way out of this except saying, well, that is app of anything. We don't really care what. We could build it with the in-memory one and no transaction, or we could build it with the database one. That would be fine because it's not going to affect the way that Roots works. Same problem here. Adding a handle to the app doesn't care, so star will do. App star, app star. How are we doing? Uh, OK, it looks like I messed up the panion object here. That should have been operator fun invoke to make that compile. Build again. And now I think we've got a whole bunch of places where we don't really care about the type. One solution's problem will be to rename app to be typed app or something, and then type alias app to be app of star. But I think I'm just going to go and make all these work. OK, what's going on here? This fixture type. Fixture is broken for the same reason as app was, in that in-memory items, which needs an item to no transaction, is not compatible with items of a superclass, this TX context. The easiest way to fix that, I think, is just to make this no TX. OK, and now we're just into a bunch of places where we need to add the unused type parameter to app. So I'm going to build and paste, build, and sooner or later we'll get to the stage where I work out a regular expression to fix everything all at once. But as you see, I have to go quite a long way before I think a regular expression search and replace is a good idea. OK, price stock list loader. This now depends on the transaction type. In the context of this test, it doesn't know what the transaction type is. It looks like we're, we are just getting from an array. So I think that is probably of no transaction. Oh, it builds. Does it pass? Yes, it does. Good. So let's look at the changes we've had to make. That has affected quite a lot of things. In particular, things like our stock ended up being parameterized by the type of the transaction in order that they can match this type of transaction to the context type they have here. I don't like the complication it brings to the code base, but I think it's kind of the truth. So I'm going to commit that. 
And the fact that I already have a commit comment here filled in will give away the fact that I've already done this once in order to work out that this was actually the solution to our problem. Anywho, quite a few changes, let's commit. A few things to check, we'll do it now. And ah uh, yes, still a warning about our context receivers. Okay then, what I think we need to do now is this is the interface that's being implemented, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to implement this one in stead stroke as well, and then delegate this one to this one and then inline that one. So let's go off and find implementations of this. Let's go back here. We'll take our signature, this one. We'll go to dual items and say, we want to do something like that, where this TX is our dbtx context. And now the implementation is going to be this thing. So I can paste that in there. Now you'll see this is unused and that doesn't compile. And I think that's because we need to supply the context parameter to our other items save until we get rid of it. So that's going to be with transaction other items save. As it says, we need to write it over right there. And this is untested at the moment, but I suppose if we implement this thing in terms of this, then we would have that test run. So now we're going to say this is save stock list given this at dbtx context. So that's a way of referring to this context parameter here. So now dual items is delegating to the one we want to keep. Let's run that. And all our tests pass. So that's dual items done. Let's return to items and find out what other implementations we have. Stock file items, let's do the same thing. So we'll take the function signature from here, put it into stock file items. This needs to say override. And the type of this is going to be no TX. That won't have actually changed anything until we make the body of this thing into that and implement this one with the previous implementation, which was save stock list with this at no TX. Is that all good? From the bar, back to items, find another implementation in memory items. Again, we will take Good. And now if I'm right, all the item subtypes have effectively the same code here. So I think I should be able to cut that out of there, move it up into items as our implementation. That's no longer override. And it is now TX, TX. And we'll do the same in stock file items and dual items and run all the tests. Marvelous. So what have we done? We've implemented the signature we now want to see, but we put in place the old signature, which is being called by all the clients. Before I do the risky thing, I think I'm going to commit this with move to explicit parameter for items save. Just have a sneaky suspicion that I might not have. Ah, there we are. Look, we can remove this one from in memory items too, I think. That should have tidied things up. Let's amend commit that. Right, back to items. All of our subtypes now are implementing this save themselves. So we should be able to get rid of that as well. Check that. Still good. And again, I'm just going to amend commit that. We want to have clean decks for a thing that might not work now, which is I want to inline this. So if I inline this function, everywhere that we're calling it should be replaced with this little piece of code here. 
Let's see what we get. Inline all the references and remove the function. That's what I want. Okay, well it's gone, so unsurprisingly, I suppose, we haven't compiled. Now, what this, it looks like IntelliJ has just randomly selected a thing rather than our transaction. Could get the transaction from this items in transaction. But instead of that for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a version of this that again doesn't have a context parameter. So if I say this is in transaction two, that takes a block, then instead of having a context parameter, receiver takes the TX. And I can implement that in terms of this in transaction as in transaction, taking the block and passing it. I think maybe my magic function here is the thing that will extract a variable out of this context. So armed with that, maybe we can go here and say this wants to be in transaction two. And now we have an explicit transaction TX, and that is what we're going to use here. Unfortunately, stock load and update stock list needs a context receiver. So we're gonna to have to do that at some point, but maybe later. In order to call that, we can say with key X, that will set up our context receiver and allow us to run maybe. Uh, we're going to have the same problem down here. So I'm basically going to copy that and put that in there, that in there, call this in transaction two. We're sort of making a pretty arbitrary place for sort of going up and down at the same time with this refactor. I don't know. Okay. So source of truth in transaction two. Here's my transaction. And that wants to go in there. Good. Also, this is other item save. I think that wants to be this transaction here. I begin to wish that I'd inlined only some of the implementations so that I could get something compiling and running and testing. I think I'm going to call this inner TX. How are we doing? Right. Items load. Here we're in a position where we have a context receiver. We need to pass it to the item saved. I think that's magic. Seems to be good. Okay, in it, items transactionally. What's that? Oh my goodness. Uh, this has a transaction context. It has an items of TX as a receiver. I have no idea what that's doing. Can I make magic work in here? Uh, I cannot. That's a shame. So this is calling items transactionally. So I wonder whether I can do the same trick here. Say so this is going to be my transaction, which is of type TX. I don't want a context receiver. And I'm going to make this in transaction two. I'm just guessing at the moment. This is going to be TX and that is going to be TX. Uh, but the other way around, I think this and TX. Oh, it compiles. That sends a chance. This is then going to be my transaction. And I can put that into there. Seems to build. So TX, TX, TX. And this load ah, is this one we haven't fixed yet. So I guess we're going to have to say with TX load. I think I should apologize for having to learn so much about context receivers that are now dead in order to remove them because they're dead. Okay, nearly done. For now, I'm just going to say that's it. Not even give it a name and get us over this little hump. <laughs>
So I think I must have messed up draw items. Let's go and have a look. Aha, it looks like our test set up another subtype of DB items. So in fact, we're calling the wrong thing. We didn't inline this one, did we? So what in fact we need to be doing is overriding the version that is stock list and the transaction context and passing that into there. We were calling it TX. In case I'm right, I'm going to remember that. Rerun the test, see whether only one fails now. That looks better. And I think we're going to have the same thing in here. Take that out, override fun, save TX of that type, and that just wants to throw. Phew. Okay, let's commit that before it gets a chance to fail in any other way. So this is inlining items dot. Let's remind ourselves we have inlined items dot save. Let's say context TX items save. Commit that. Now, I'm sure that was painful enough for all of us, but I have to do the same thing for load. I think I'm just going to shut up and fast forward through this with the funky music. Oh my goodness, what was that? Uh, okay, quite a bit. So let's just go to items, see how we're doing. So we've replaced load as a context function with load to taking a transaction. So I think we might now just rename this one to load and run. PU. Okay, so. Well, I think I'm going to call it inlining because it's a work in progress. Context TX items load. Good. And now I'm going to finish things off again on fast forward, I think. Now, items in transaction is unused, so I can delete it. Okay, I can rename this to be in transaction like that. And the context receivers have gone from items. That leaves the question of where they are still. And if we search for context, you'll see that we have them in stock and contexts and the price stock list loader and some places where we use them in tests. So before we go on, let's commit that. I think probably we were still doing that job, so I'm going to call that inlined that, and then commit it with the previous one, and send that off. Run the test just to check. All still good, and now we have the last set of job to do on stock. So here we are. Stock needs context of TX to load and update the stock list. I think that's not used in a lot of places, we might just get away with saying, I want a TX, which is my type TX. I'm going to remove that. That's going to be load with my transaction. And let's see what else we need to fix. Item save in the same transaction, which was kind of the point. Build it. Okay, the price stock list loader. This now wants not a transaction context, but something that takes an instant and a transaction. We'll fix this bit up in just a minute, but I think we can say that this magic now just moves over there. The app creates a price stock list loader. Remind ourselves. So this is going to be what? It's going to be now and the transaction say now 
and the transaction going to be the parameters of that block and that is going to be now and the transaction built again delete items with ID items in transaction that's that that gives us our transaction so we now know that we can put that into there perfect getting there getting there same thing here tx right price stop let's load of tests i think we have the same issue here this needs to be now and tx to that and tx oh no i've messed that up let's undo it so stock values get it stock values is a map let's remind ourselves what our price stock list loader wants it wants loading is something that takes an instant and a transaction and returns a result ah so i think we just need to say this is our loading here so we were right it takes an instant and a transaction but we ignore most of them and pass the now into there guess that means we don't care about the transaction load stock from file items in transaction that's going to be my transaction passed into that block do that into there and we don't need the with it because that has removed our context receiver i suspect there's going to be a few of those so now it like that now it like that i'll do the decent thing and call that tx in there should have done the same in the last one but sooner or later that'll get fixed up now it with it goes away call that tx build and runs good so what did we just do we removed the context parameter from stock load and update stock list receiver from stock load and update stock list and if i'm right there should only be one context of anything interesting left and that is my price stock list loader and i think you get the gist by now i'm just going to do this so <music>